This is the circle of fifths chord progression. A chord progression where with each chord change we're moving by the interval of a fifth. Which effectively means that as we move around the chord progression, we're moving around the circle of fifths. Now, this chord progression has been used for centuries in a whole range of different styles of music. For example, jazz. Or rock music. or disco music. Or even classical music. This chord progression just has a very satisfying sound, like with each chord change it just sounds like we're landing in the correct place, like it's almost meant to be put together like this. And the reason for this super satisfying sound comes down to the chord progression's namesake, the circle of fifths. The perfect fifth is, beyond the octave, the most consonant and universally satisfying interval. Whether we're talking about notes in the melody, about key centres in a key change, or about chords in a chord progression, if they're a fifth away from each other, they're going to work well together. Chords that are related by the interval of a fifth are considered to be highly compatible, closely related, so moving between them has a very satisfying sound. So in our circle of fifths progression, almost every chord change is the movement of a perfect fifth. This makes every chord change sound very natural, very logical and satisfying. Now I say almost every chord change because there is actually one chord change here that's not a perfect fifth. This one. This is actually a diminished fifth, but we'll talk more about why that's there later. So it's the fact that these chords are moving by a fifth each time, moving around the circle of fifths, which makes them sound so satisfying. But what actually is the circle of fifths? The circle of fifths is simply a tool that musicians use to conceptualise how notes and chords and key centres are related to each other. We can actually arrange the 12 pitches of Western music into a circle like this, where each one is a perfect fifth away from each other. And as you can see, in a very satisfying way, our 12 pitches can wrap around this circle, each time being a perfect fifth away from another. Arranging the 12 notes around the circle like this is a very effective way to understand how closely related two notes are. For example, if we're talking about key centres, notes that are next door to each other on the circle of fifths will be closely related because they share all but one note with each other. For example, C is sat next to F and G. The key of C has all but one note in common with the key of F and the key of G. The key of F is exactly the same as C major but has a B flat rather than B, and the key of G is exactly the same as C but has an F sharp rather than an F natural. So these keys are highly compatible, they're closely related, moving between them will result in a very smooth and cohesive modulation. But on the other side of the circle is F sharp. The key of F sharp is very much not related to the key of C. So this means that whether we're talking about a key change or a melodic change or a chord change, moving between C and F sharp will sound stark, disjointed and unrelated. This doesn't necessarily make it bad, sometimes we want that starkness. But if we understand the relationship between different notes, between different chords and key centres, using the circle of fifths, we can make better informed decisions about which notes to move between. So basically, if a chord progression moves by step around the circle of fifths, it's going to have that satisfying sense 
of each chord being related to the next. It sounds like it all fits together. And inversely, if I jump around the circle of fifths at random, we'll wind up with some chord changes that sound very unrelated and chaotic. Now, the circle of fifths chord progression, the one that we've looked at so far today, travels anti-clockwise around the circle. Now, this is the chord progression that is usually labelled the circle of fifths chord progression. However, we can have other chord progressions that take advantage of the circle of fifths. For example, what about if we travelled clockwise around the circle? This is what happens in Here Comes the Sun. And it's also happening here in Jimi Hendrix's Hey Joe. You can hear how each chord change sort of folds neatly into the next one. The movement is so natural and frictionless. Travelling by fifths like this is actually a great way of moving between two chords that are usually quite unrelated and distant. For example, here in Hey Joe, the chords of C major and E major are actually quite unrelated. If the chord progression just jumped straight from C to E, it would sound quite stuck. But by moving step by step around the circle, we can travel from C major to E major in a very frictionless, logical way. I think for the majority of songwriters, they're not actively thinking about the circle of fifths when they write these chord progressions. They're just being drawn towards these progressions because they just sound so satisfying. But that isn't true of all songwriters, and some songwriters and composers will actually use the circle of fifths as a tool to help them complete a chord progression. For example, when Ray Manzarek was composing the keyboard intro to The Doors Light My Fire, he decided that the progression should travel around the circle of fifths to emulate the sound of something that Bach would write. Now, for the first two chord changes, Ray moves clockwise around the circle, but then from the F chord onwards, he moves anti-clockwise, smoothly jumping from chord to chord before then, in actually quite a stark jump, shifting to an A major chord. In this interview, we can hear Ray describing how he was aiming to emulate the circle of fifths movement that he had seen in many of the Bach pieces that he had learnt as a student. It was a, it was a, a, a Bach circle of fifths, as it's called. Um, I knew I was going to end up on an A minor, that, but we had to get to that A minor, so I went from a G, da 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 D, da da F, da 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 B flat, A flat, and then modulated to the yeah. A minor. And yeah. it just came out of, uh, you know, of 15, 20 years of uh, musical right. practice. Now, I mentioned earlier that in the circle of fifths chord progression, every chord is moving by a perfect fifth apart from one. This chord change is the interval of a diminished fifth instead. So why is this here? Why can't we just make every chord change a perfect fifth? Well, that's because to have a chord progression that purely used perfect fifths, it would have to travel all the way around the circle of fifths, meaning it would take a minimum of 12 chords. And this would make it quite awkward to fit into an eight bar phrase. So when composers and songwriters actually use the circle of fifths in their chord progressions, rather than making every chord change a perfect fifth, they will tend to make at least one chord change a different interval to allow the progression to neatly resolve back to the tonic chord at the end of an 8-bar phrase. In the examples we've looked at at the beginning of the video, this issue was solved by placing this diminished fifth here, so we have enough time to neatly resolve back to our tonic chord. But this isn't the only solution. Cat Stevens' Wild World also uses a circle of fifths progression. However, he uses a different solution to create the resolution back to the tonic chord. Wild Wild follows the circle of fifths until this point, where we instead get the movement of a third and then a second. Then from here he can travel in fifths again, 
and end the phrase neatly back where he began. Now that I lost everything to you, you said you want to start something new, and it's breaking my heart you're leaving, maybe I'm grieving. And some songs just keep the circle of fifths progression just down to four bars rather than eight bars. For example, Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder follows the circle of fifths chord progression for three chords and then moves by minor third to reset the progression back to where he started. This gives us a shorter, more concise progression which still benefits from the circle of fifths movement. Perfect fifths, as I mentioned earlier, are generally considered to be the most satisfying and purest interval, the purest way that we can move between two notes or, or two chords. But different composers will find different ways to mix the perfect fifth with other intervals. Because of course, even if the perfect fifth is considered to be the purest, it doesn't mean it's the best. And we sometimes want some of that contrast that can come from a different chord. That said though, I am curious to see what a piece would sound like if it did have a chord progression that moved all the way around the circle of fifths. Now I couldn't actually find an example of this, so I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to actually create my own piece that travels all the way around the circle of fifths. So I'm going to start on the chord of C and work my way all the way around the circle of fifths until I get back to C at the end. What you're probably finding now is even though we started on the chord of C, it doesn't particularly feel like the resolution. And what I found is when you keep going in fifths on and on and on, you completely lose track of which key, which note in the key is meant to be your tonic. Because really, when you move by a fifth, you really emphasize the note you arrive on, which makes it sound a bit like the tonic. And if you never build any wider context with other intervals from the scale, you just sound like you're changing key forever. Like every time you land on a new chord, it sounds like you have moved key. It sounds like we're now in this key, but we could just keep on moving. Are we now in this key? It's just very interesting to lose that sense of tonality by playing what should be the most satisfying interval we have. And thank you as always to all of the patrons who make my videos possible, including the names you see on screen right now, and Andre Sanz Diage, Andy Deacon, Andrew, Andrew Sussman, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Boomer Dale, Brittany Parker, Cam Villa, Colin Aiken, Charles Finn, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Bennett's Hot, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, Eugene Leroy, F.D. Hodor, Greg Kubowski, Gilda Molotona, Hamish Brocklebank, Hernet Kutcher, Hugo Miller, Ivan Pang, Jake Fisher, J.A. Hokensparger, John Dye, Just Dom Chen, Just 
Sandlin, Justin Vigor, Mark Saitera, Mark Ziegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melody Shonard, Michael Vivian, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Nick Cheng, Paul Middleton, Paul Miller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunphy, Richard Pride, Roger Clay, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Victor Levy, Vidal Flowers, Vladimir Kodikov, Volti, The Washington Shakespearean Festival, Boylan Fairbanks, and Zayfod. <laughs>